This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. And this question comes from Noel. Noel recognizes and accepts the dichotomy we talk about often between the employer class on the one hand and the employee class on the other and has no problem with that argument and that logic, but wants to ask an important follow-up question. The argument Noel points to is the one that says there are certain kinds of activities, certain functions that an enterprise, a group of people working on something uh, have to deal with. Some kinds of resources are better purchased in bulk because the price is much better. Some kinds of decisions uh, have to be made quickly, have to be made without the time to go through the normal, elaborate, democratic way of working a problem out and uh, arriving at a democratic solution. And Noel asks, how do we deal with that? Noel also asks, if people have intrinsically different capabilities, uh, how is that going to be handled in the same situation? These are important questions, and they're the kind of questions that should be asked about the whole notion of a different economic system based on a worker cooperative organization versus the typical capitalist hierarchical one. So let me answer partly the theory, but partly also the empirical record. We now have a long history of worker co-ops. They have had to deal with these questions and to come up with practical solutions, which they did. And part of my task here is to make you aware of some of them and interlace that with what other ones might be. Okay, here we go. One of the solutions figured out was to say we are all equal, all basic decisions in this worker co-op will be made democratically, one worker, one vote, everyone is equal to one ver worker, one vote. But for those kinds of decisions that need to be made quickly or that need for any reason to be handled in a different way, we're going to set up a supervisory committee or a coordinating committee, a lot of words for it. It's a subgroup. In a capitalist enterprise, it would be the managers, the board of directors, that kind of thing. But in a worker co-op, they can't have that, of course, because it's all one person, one vote. So how do they get the benefits of a small group of people who can stay on top of all the basic uh, decisions that have to be made for an enterprise uh, by a small group with authority. Well, the way they've handled it, the most impressive way that I have encountered is by utilizing and focusing on the principle of rotation. A small group is a coordinating committee or a supervisory committee, but everyone rotates through that function. This year and next, you may be on the coordinating committee, but the following two years, you'll be on the coordinated part of the worker co-op. That way, no one forgets both sides. No one makes a decision without understanding that they're going to have to live with that decision when they're off the coordinating committee, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to go even further in the spirit of Noel's question and point out, even if there were some kinds of issues that didn't lend themselves to that, where you really began to get worried that a temporary leadership position could harden into the kind of permanent ones we know are normal in capitalism. Well, I think there, there has to be a certain kind of biting of the bullet. And here's what I mean. There may be trade-offs on occasion. You may have to forego something efficient. You may have to forego something logical and desirable 
because it compromises the democracy you believe in as foundational to your economy and to your society. And when that happens, there should be no shirking. There should be no pretense. We have to choose. And we may very well decide, as I hope we would, that the value of a worker co-op is worth sacrificing in some other areas because we don't want to lose the democracy, we don't want to lose the equality, and therefore we're going to make that kind of decision. Last point. I want us to be careful about ideas like people have different capabilities, different specialties. I understand what's being meant, but I want everyone to understand that we are at the very beginning of human knowledge about why people have different capabilities, different preferences, all the differences that make us unique. And one of the great virtues of a worker co-op is it doesn't prejudge that. Everybody has skills. They just differ. Everybody has capabilities. They just differ. And a worker co-op should study how to bring them out how to help people find what they're particularly good at and then integrate all of that. Everybody's knowledge should play a role in the decisions, not out of an abstract notion that democracy is good, although that's okay, but out of the notion people who look at the world differently will come up with different assessments. Let's have that part of the discussion when we make decisions in our workplace. Let's not exclude it for any reason. This is Richard Wolf, hoping that you find this kind of intervention interesting enough to work with us, to partner with us, to share it to friends, co-workers, relatives. That's why we make these videos. And of course, if you can help us defray the costs, that's another way that will be very much appreciated in terms of your partnership. Thank you.